Hello everyone and welcome to my sewing studio. Today I'm going to make my first piece of historically inspired clothing, putting a modern twist on a chemise. But first I'd like to take you on a quick tour of my studio, show you my current wardrobe and my goals for adding to it. <laughs> I designed my sewing room to be accessible for my disability. I deal with chronic pain in my neck and shoulders, and I have migraines from a neck injury I sustained as a teen. I also have low energy, which is currently undiagnosed, but I do my best to take care of myself and manage my energy. Because of this, my goal was to create a sewing workroom that would allow me to focus on creating without further aggravating my pain or expending unnecessary energy. Now let's go show you the room. When you first enter the room, the first thing we come across is my sewing table. I got this from my boyfriend's grandma. So there's a tray in this table for the sewing machine to sit on. The opening wasn't originally the right size for my machine, so we just cut it to be a bigger rectangular opening. So I can easily slide it in like that. And then it has three drawers in the top drawer. I have all of the things that I need while I sew, some old candle tins with clips and things in them, my measuring tape, seam ripper, heat erasable pens, and of course scissors. In the second drawer here. We have notions, closures, trims, embroidery, th um, embroidery thread, ribbon, and in the bottom drawer is all my thread. Next, of course, you met Felicia. She's doing well so far. To the right of that is my desk, where I do a lot of my editing and work but also gaming with friends. I wanted to show you guys a few of the things that I bought just to start the channel off. This is what I use to light my room so that it gives a nice natural light. It was very cheap. It was $10 at, I believe, Home Depot or Lowe's. This tripod stick, which I'm currently using, and this external hard drive for storing all the video. This is the same phone that I use to record. This is just my boyfriend so that I could show you guys what I'm using. I don't have a fancy camera. In the future, I may get one, but for now, this phone is doing really well for recording. This set of drawers I recently got to organize my other craft supplies. Up in this box, we have my Cabbage Patch. And in this drawer, I store all of my candles. This is my wonderful friend that I get my candles from. They're amazing. I love the candles. In the second drawer, I have hardware for corsetry and leather work. I do want to take these and hang them on the wall. Not sure exactly. How I want to do it, but I'm thinking that I'll be able to store some of my things that I need for cutting regularly up there. In this drawer I have painting supplies, fabric dye, um, I kept this egg carton for mixing paints, simple paint brushes, this bag holds my current commission that I'm working on. In here under the table I have storage. These two tubs have fabric and thrifted clothes that I want to thrift flip. And then up here I have grocery bags from what my groceries are delivered in and I just use that for patterning. This is my LARP chest, where I keep some of my LARP costuming pieces that don't go with my daily wardrobe. Fairy wings, a piratey corset, that kind of stuff. 
kitten likes to sleep up here sometimes. That's why I put the blanket there. It also helps him not be tempted to come up on my table where I'm working. A tabletop ironing board, iron, a uh, pitcher to refill the iron with, my pen holder, rulers. I got this bookcase for free and just kind of tossed everything on it just to get it out of the way. This is a project I definitely want to work on, get all of this organized and actually get a decent bookshelf. Here's my dresser. Most of the clothes that I keep in here are undergarments, pajamas, things that I wouldn't wear for outerwear, so we don't need to go through that. I actually have blackout curtains to help with the migraines. So having that lamp really helps to have a nice dim light and then the overhead light works to simulate daylight when I'm filming. Right now it's actually dark outside. This of course is my bed with my very precious oldest cat, Beethoven. Isn't he just so sweet? For now, while he's sleeping. So this is where I do my hand sewing and of course, sleep. On my nightstand here I have my laptop. This is for whenever I'm not feeling well enough to get out of bed I can still get work done or play games with my friends. This is my self-care drawer. I've got everything I need if I'm not feeling well. Snacks, an extra water bottle, medicines, um, just in case I can't get out of bed and need to take care of myself. This is my dressing chair. I use it to keep my clothes that I've already worn, don't want to hang back up, but are still wearable because they're not dirty yet. And here we have reached my wardrobe. It's very crammed in. I wish I had a bigger closet, but I don't. Uh, in the back, I keep more off-season clothes, my tank tops. This section here is t-shirts. Uh, I have modern pieces and like historically inspired pieces all together for now. Right now, because it's winter, my warm clothes are here at the forefront. Easy to grab. And then I recently got these hangers to hold pants and skirts so that I can hang them because I really do prefer having my clothes hung. These are my Lolita dresses and boleros that I sometimes wear with them. I only have three dresses right now. I do have plans to make another one that I really consider my dream dress. Of course, my shoes are down there, and then up above the clothes, I have my Lolita petticoats, some wigs. I love wigs. I wish I had more. And for someone who does not think that they look good in hats, I have a lot of hats. So a majority of my wardrobe was thrifted. I haven't really bought a lot of new clothes recently besides undergarments. I think the thing that I'm most willing to still buy new is my graphic t-shirts. Thrifting really is what is most accessible for me. So that is what I prefer to do to help out the planet. These are the pieces that I want to add to my wardrobe next, starting with the chemise I'm going to make today. Next, I plan to make this corset, and then I would like to make this vest. And my latest idea is a 1940s sailor pant does 18th century breeches. If you've done 
any research into historical dress, you'd have heard one very important rule. Corsets are not meant to be worn directly on the skin. The purpose of the chemise was to protect your skin from chafing against the corset, while also protecting your corset from the oil and sweat produced by your body. A chemise is made from lightweight, breathable linen and hangs loosely around the body. In comparison, those who wear modern corsets typically wear them over a t-shirt, camisole, or stretchy corset liner, such as this one from Lucy Corsetry. For my own design, I have decided to make it from linen, as they would historically, but go without straps or sleeves so that I could wear it under any modern clothes I own. Since the sleeves of a chemise are designed to protect the corset from one's underarms, I'm adding a ruffle at the top to go over the edge of the corset. I'm hoping this will also help them to soften that edge the way a corset cover would in the Victorian and Edwardian eras. I'm starting with my hip measurement, since this is my widest point, adding seam allowance and ease so that it sits comfortably over my body the way my t-shirts do. Next, I'm measuring the length from above my bust to my hips, this time adding one half inch hem allowance for the top and bottom edges, plus three inches for the ruffle. After transferring these measurements to my linen, this leaves me with a large rectangle, allowing me to make my chemise from a single piece of fabric. I want to ensure a perfect rectangle following the grain line exactly, so I'm cutting using the historical method known as drawing a thread. Now that I have my very basic pattern cut out, I'm sewing the two sides together, stopping three and a half inches from the top edge. Above my stitching, I'm folding the edges to the other side of the fabric, clipping into the seam allowance and hemming the entire top. Folding the corners over, and machine felling the seam on the inside. Next, I'm folding the hemmed edge down to make the ruffle and sewing 3 eighths of an inch from the top to make a casing for my drawstring. The last thing I need to do is hem the bottom, and my chemise is complete! enjoyed watching me make this very simple first piece for my wardrobe. Next on my list is the Symington Pretty Housemaid Corset, which has been anything but simple. Stay tuned for that and other history bounding projects. Thanks for watching! What is it, baby? You see the stink bug?
It's hiding from you, huh? Sorry, baby. I gotta get back to work. Take care. Time to get back to work, baby.